Why had anyone that noticed? He had the wrong head on. We've been using skulls today to teach skull anatomy and, oh, now you're a bit twi twisted. Um, he had the, is it just because I'm the, I, we've been working together for so long that I'm the only one that notices when you've, you've got the wrong head on? Anyway, that's your right head now. Sorry, uh, we're quite a long way away from our target topic today. The question is, what is um, the pouch of Douglas? Uh, and that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find out what the pouch of Douglas is, hopefully very succinctly. We're going to look, it's going to be a visual thing to see what it is, describe how it forms, and then a bit of clinical stuff, right? Uh, pelvis. What is the pouch of Douglas? Um, well, here's some cling film, but this cling film is going to be peritoneum. Peritoneum is very much like cling film. It's a thin connective tissue membrane. Um, the cells here do make a little bit of fluid, so it gets, it's a serous membrane, and it covers, it's a single sheet that lines the abdominal cavity and also covers all of the abdominal organs. We'll come back to this. Let's have a look at the female pelvis. Here, are the organs of the female pelvis. Um, this is a essentially a mid-sagittal section, but we're also looking laterally here at the, there's the pubis bone, anteriorly, bladder, uterus, and rectum. So here's the vagina here, so bladder, vagina, rectum. That's the vertebral column here, the sacrum, that's posterior. And what we can see is that that peritoneum that's lining the abdominal cavity, well, this is the abdominal cavity here. This is where we would find the small intestine if it was included in this model. So that peritoneum that's lining the abdominal cavity continues down and also covers over the organs of the pelvis. So what we're seeing here, this is a cut edge of the peritoneum passing over the bladder, over the uterus, and then over the rectum. And what you might be able to see is that that peritoneum follows, it covers the surface of the organ and follows it down and back up again. Cling film. I just realized I need three hands for this. Okay, so here's our peritoneum. Here is an organ, here is another organ. Here's an organ, it's covered by peritoneum. That peritoneum is kindly, tightly covering the surface of that organ. And this organ too. So these organs are covered by peritoneum. Now if those organs come to lie against one another, they have two layers of peritoneum between them. And this bit here is the peritoneal cavity. And I said there's a little bit of fluid in there. So this is great because this means that those organs can slide over each other very easily, which is crucial for the normal actions of the stomach and the small intestine, for example. And down in the pelvis, if we have the uterus and the rectum, likewise, these things can move around easily. But we have now got a pouch in between those two organs. And whilst those two organs are against each other, that space is merely a potential space. There might be a little bit of fluid there, just a few milliliters of fluid, but it's a potential space. That is the pouch of Douglas. Back to the model. So, there's the rectum. There's that peritoneum that's covering it. There's the uterus. So that potential space in there is the pouch of Douglas. It's also called the recto-uterine pouch. It also gets called the cul-de-sac. Because it's such a useful site clinically, it, you know, it's kind of almost a bit of a shorthand. You know, a cul-de-sac is like a, there's an end in the road. The road doesn't go anywhere. It's a cul-de-sac. Uh, so that gets called the cul-de-sac. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll also see that there is a similar pouch between the uterus and the bladder. Now the bladder is, um, it's a fluid filled pouch, a vesicle. So that pouch, that potential space formed by the peritoneum between the bladder and the uterus gets called the 
Visico Uterine pouch. Now, if you want to add a little bit more detail to this, I said that this is the vagina and this is the rectum, and you can see that this pouch is kind of descending down to between the vagina and the rectum. So you might also hear this called the recto-vaginal pouch. Okay, so understanding the organs here, understanding that anatomy of peritoneum, helps you understand what we're talking about. Let's have a quick look at the male pelvis to compare. If we look at the male pelvis then, well, here's the bladder here, this is all bladder, and this is the rectum. So there's just a single pouch, a recto vesical pouch, right? And again, you've got the same issue of this is peritoneum covering over all of these pelvic organs, and you've got this, this pouch of peritoneum, this potential space here, a recto vesical pouch. Simpler. We can look at the female pelvis from another angle. So we've got the whole pelvis here, we're looking into the pelvis there. We can again see the peritoneum draped over these structures. Here's the uterus. Uh, this will be the bladder here. So this is the pubis bone. So the bladder is up against the pubis bone. Then we have the uterus and posteriorly we have the, the rectum. So in there, in there will be the vesico uterine pouch. And then back here, between the uterus and the rectum will be the recto uterine pouch, the pouch of Douglas. So we're naming from superficial to deep, yeah? Recto uterine, vesico uterine over here. So that's what that looks like there. All right. You may be here because the phrase pouch of Douglas has come up in polite conversation, um, as it often does. Why? Well, if you consider this point here, and if you imagine, remember gravity, so if somebody has stood up or if somebody is led down, this point here is usually the most inferior and posterior point of the peritoneal cavity. Now there is normally a little bit of fluid here. So in women of childbearing age, I think there's like between three and five mil of fluid here normally, uh, as there is a little bit of fluid in the peritoneal cavity anyway. But if there is more fluid than normal in the peritoneal cavity, this is where it's likely to collect because of gravity. Um, where does that fluid come from? Um, there could be peritonitis. So the peritoneum is inflamed because of infection, makes more fluid, collects here. If there's infection, there could be bacteria, there could be an abscess, so pus might collect here. Um, there might be an injury with bleeding, so blood would collect here. Ascites, um, which can be caused by portal hypertension, so increased pressure of blood trying to get through the liver. I know, I still haven't talked about portosystemic anastomoses. I will, I'm just trying to work out how to do it. Um, if fluid is collecting in the peritoneum because of ascites, because of that change in pressures of fluids, then that will collect here as well, okay? That's why the pouch of Douglas is so noteworthy clinically. Um, but that's it, and hopefully now you'll recognize the different terms and you'll be able to confidently identify these pouches because of the major organs. Um, and um, you understand the peritoneum a bit more, hopefully. The peritoneum is something that grows, as in <laughs> when you're trying to learn about it, learning about the different parts of it, it grows as you look at different anatomy around the body. Okay? Whew, okay. Well done. See you next week.